clearly in the Santa Barbara Basin that have taken those sedimentary records back five years mm -hmm. in a very quantitative sense and linked it to climate variability, specifically in oxygen depleted sediments where primary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does your work in the northern extent of that coordinate the Santa Barbara or your own work? Okay, I'll start from the, the back first, uh, uh, the last part. So the, um, uh, if you go back a long way, then the relationship between anchovies and sardines comes in and out of phase. It's like the, the sardine didn't, I said the, uh, tongue in cheek, the sardine get, didn't get the memo that it was supposed to go away. So that, that at least for California, it looks like it's, it, it may be in phase sometimes and may be out of phase other times. Uh, we, I didn't show you, we work with, with off the coast of Peru, and there's a beautiful uh, uh, paleo time series there of the abundance of fish through the Little Ice Age. And uh, the Peru, the Peru is the richest uh, uh, ocean in the world in terms of fish. And that richness is only uh, of recent era, after the end of the Little Ice Age. In, during the Little Ice Age, there was hardly no uh, uh, fish at least in the sedimentary record of Peru, because we think that the, uh, um, that the area was not as productive. That it, the, this um, change that I was saying that earlier, that this cold, uh, uh, productive area uh, is a feature of a warmer world, looks like in, during the Little Ice Age, it was not evident. Um, the, uh, the, so, uh, I'm not sure I answered that question, but they, uh, in, in many cases, there's very clear correspondence between the climate variability in the fish. In other cases, it's not as clear, like in the Santa Barbara Basin, the, rec the records are not as, as clear in terms of this uh, synchrony. Do you guys have sedimentary sediment studies up in the north by Monterey? Uh, there's no uh, uh, low oxygen waters off of Monterey to do the same work that you can do in the Santa Barbara Basin. We, the, if you go further south into the, uh, off of Baja, there are uh, basins where that, that can be done. And the records there, I think, are more similar to the ones off of Peru. Um, with the eDNA, and I mentioned this, the, the, when you do this, the uh, shotgun approach and you look at everything, then it becomes more qualitative than quantitative, although I think we're going to get better at it. Uh, and it's partly because it's, it's um, partly a matter of chance. If you get a big chunk versus a little chunk, then it'll look like you got a lot of uh, 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 numbers of organisms when it could be just one organism with a big chunk. So there is, it's always going to be uh, not as precise as, but if you do, if you use the uh, quantitative PCR, we think it's much better. And we can get at, at much more quantitative ways if you pick at, a particular organism. So the, a question that we have to think about as scientists is, is it better to know everything? And that probably, you know, we may be overloaded with information. Or are there specific organisms that are key that we want to really track in the ocean uh, and, and focus on a smaller set of those uh, to get our first view of, of uh, a global distribution? So I don't know if I answered that or not, but. Thank you.